It is the start of three very important things that are happening this month. The first is the Asian Readathon that I'm participating in, the second is the Mental Healthathon that I'm participating in, and the third is it's my birthday month. Anyway, I've had quite an interesting morning this morning because I went to walk to the gym and I actually stepped on some vomit. I don't know whose vomit it was. Um, so I had to like quickly go to the locker rooms at the gym, basically wash my shoes, work out in like damp shoes. Um, and then my uh, gym leggings, pants ripped. So I had to go to the mall um, and buy new ones. <laughs> anyway, I'm back home and uh, I actually am planning to go to the movies with my friend this afternoon but besides that I had an appointment that I think is cancelled so hopefully I won't have to go anywhere before I go to the movies and I can just focus on reading my first read which is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi um, I am not that far in but I'm really enjoying it so far. I, I am especially enjoying uh, the male character in this. I, I just think his story and his background and stuff uh, is something that we don't see a lot of in YA. This is like more older YA because the the girl is like a freshman at university. I just got home from hanging out with my friend and there was actually a package at my door. Um, I don't remember what I ordered because I've been kind of... um online shopping when I'm a little stressed and sad <laughs> um, it's not a problem don't worry uh, I don't know how to open this oh I ordered this like a month ago. This is actually not like a reading thing that I'm gonna read this month. It's a, a like a writing manual th uh, thing. So I'm actually gonna spend the rest of the night editing my April vlog. Um, so while I'm doing that, I thought I would listen to an audiobook and um, I'm gonna listen to the group book for Asian Readathon. Uh, which is a thousand beginnings and endings i ordered my physical copy and i think it's gonna come to my door tomorrow so i'll just listen to the audiobook now my name is andrew tate and this is season one episode 15 of let's not meet a true horror podcast i was actually about to head out to catch my train when a package arrived i actually know what this one is as opposed to yesterday's package that i knew nothing about. This one I only ordered like last week I think um, and I think, I hope I'm right, but I think it's the uh, the group book for the Asian Readathon and also a poetry collection that I ordered. So let's hope, ow, let's hope I'm right. Okay, we're gonna use the pen again because I hate these packages. I hate this. How am I supposed to like whoever creates these packages? Can we talk? Because the tab that um that you're supposed to pull always breaks. Anyway. Ooh, one of them is hardcover? I didn't know this. So the first book is Helium by Rudy Francisco. This is a poetry collection. Uh, if you don't know, Rudy Francisco is one of my favorite spoken word poets, or I guess just general poets of all time. And um, yeah, I, ooh, did I get a bookmark? Cute, nice. Okay, um, yeah, I don't care about the bookmarks. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get into this. I don't know if this will fit any of the challenges within the two readathons that uh, I'm participating in this month but I hope it does because I just I just want to read it I mean I'm probably just gonna read it anyway and the second book I didn't know was gonna be hardcover it was kind of cheap 
for it to be hardcover so I didn't think that it would be but it's a thousand beginnings and endings edited by Ellen O and Elsie Chapman um, and it's an anthology of like Asian myths retold and retellings and all that stuff I actually already read the first story by Roshani Chop I don't know how to say her last name, I'm so sorry. Um, and I really, really like that one. And if that is the only story that I like from this collection, uh, then I don't care. I, I'm still going to want to own this collection because I just, I really, really enjoyed that one. It was about, um, it was the, the Filipino myth about the mountain or something. I can't remember what the, what the actual mountain is called, but I thought it was really well written and it was so pretty and just really sad and I'm a sucker for like sad endings so let's hope the rest of the stories in this collection is as good as the first one anyway I really have to catch my train so I'm gonna bring this with me I have basically spent the day in bed because I woke up kind of gloomy and so um, I wanted to force myself to do things today because that's what I've been doing for the past couple of months. I just, I'm sad so I force myself to do stuff to distract myself but today I, I just woke up and I was like I can't, I don't want to. Also it's been pretty much raining the whole day so I spent the day just relaxing. I read the second story in A Thousand Beginnings and Endings anthology. It's a myth about the Hungry Ghost Festival, uh, which is like a like a Chinese uh, story, myth, myth, folklore thing. Uh, let me see what the actual short story is called. It's called Olivia's Table by Alyssa Wong. I, I really like it. I think what I really liked about this short story in particular is explained at the very end of the short story. So basically what happens is you have the short story and then when it's done there's like a little section where the author would write um, the original folktale. Not, not retell it but like they would write uh, where they got the inspiration from so for her it was the the folklore of the hungry ghost festival um and she writes how like what inspired her to write this one in particular and why she was drawn to the story and what i really liked is uh that she mentions that this folklore in particular showcases how important food is in this culture and someone I'm Asian I come from an Asian family I come from a really big Asian family and uh, food is definitely a very important thing and I think I, I I think it's safe to say that when it comes to Asian cultures and stuff food is a very important thing and this is one of the only stories I think that I've read from that kind of showcases that and how how important food is and meals and and like cooking it yourself and all that stuff how important that is in our culture uh so um even though i'm not chinese I, I still kind of i don't know i still kind of understand that and i relate to that because because that's what it's like in our family as well besides like doing a lot of editing and stuff that i've been doing today i'm also going to write maybe I don't know, we'll see, but um, what I'm going to move on to is I'm going to move on to the poetry collection Helium by Rudy Francisco. I have since done some research on this collection of poetries and apparently there is some um, poems about mental health. I think, um, I think it's about like anxiety or something so that could definitely fit into the mental health -athon. today i read a little bit more of emergency contact by mary hk Choi, and as i mentioned in the previous clip where i talked about this book i really like the male character in this i relate to the male character so much especially at this point in my life um not um not you know circumstances wise but just like the things that he's going through inside his head and all that stuff 
Yeah. The only thing I think that is stopping me from reading this book any faster is my detachment from the female character. Because this is dual perspective, I not only have to read from the perspective of the male character, but I also have to read from Penny's character. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. In fact, Penny's, I would say, is the main focus of this story, even though we're getting two sides of one story kind of thing. Uh, but I just, I don't. I think I just don't relate to her in a way. It's not that I don't like her, it's that I just don't relate to... Not... I do relate to some of the things that she's kind of going through and stuff. I just don't... I don't really like how she handles things and I think that might also be the fact that, you know, this is still the beginning of the story so there's probably going to be like character development and all that stuff um so hopefully that changes and i do end up liking her a little bit more the thing that i do like about her perspective and her story side of this whole thing is her um is the dialogue and i think i just like the dialogue in this book um in general because it's very it's one of those things where uh, you have to kind of read between the lines and character relationships are uh, defined by things that aren't in the dialogue, if that makes sense. Um, so I just read a scene, I won't spoil anything, but I just read a scene where um, she has this conversation with her roommate and without, without giving us as the readers any exposition, um, just by that simple dialogue we know that the roommate knows what's going on with her because at the start of the chapter I thought the roommate knew nothing and then that conversation happened and I was like oh okay so so they talk it's just we just don't see that and I kind of like that because it seems a lot more realistic because we don't all go around um, you know explaining our subtext and explaining our inside jokes and and stuff like that and our backstory and all that stuff we don't do that so it feels very realistic and that's what I like about this book so far besides um, the male character because yeah his story is so interesting to me and something that I don't read a lot of especially in like young adult romances Not gonna lie, I haven't done a lot of reading today because I woke up super early to catch the train to a wedding expo that my friend, uh, my two friends who are getting married invited me to because I am a part of the bridesmaid, you know, group of people. I don't know what the wedding people are called. Um, and uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a couple of hours. Uh, there was a lot of people there and uh, there was a lot of stalls and like she was trying to get ideas and all that stuff and the maid of honor which is another one of my friend was there as well and we just had coffee because it's been kind of a gloomy day because it's been raining on and off but like kind of gloomy all day um and then i got back home and i'm actually about to head out again uh, because uh my friend invited me to dinner so i'm gonna go and hang out with him for tonight i don't know how long we'll be but like we're probably just gonna hang out and then um i'll come back home hopefully i'll get some reading done today but um this is probably one of the rare occasions where i'm busy on a sunday usually sundays are like sacred for me because i like i love sunday sunday is one of my favorite days of the week it is my favorite day of the week and so i like to relax and like not do much on a sunday um but yeah, I'm just running around all day today. 